Okay, so we're back again with uh, the second part of this, and actually this is going to end up being three parts because what I'm going to actually do now is I'm going to end up tapping that uh, hole for that radiator uh, to a 16 millimeter. If you buy one of these radiators for this KT, this Polaris Outlaw K with the KTM 525, and you see the dual core radiators for sale on eBay, what they're doing is they basically have the thread for a Predator which the Predator uh, thermo switch is a 14 millimeter so you need to tap the hole from a 14 to a 15 and then from a 15 to a 16 and the KTM sensor is a 16 millimeter by one and a half uh, thread pitch um, this has been a complete nightmare for me between the radiator shop and getting the right tap and size pieces uh, to do this because the radiator wasn't made properly so uh, what I had to do was I actually bought a thread repair kit um, which I actually needed one so the thread repair kit I thought the 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 bolt size and the thread of the pitch of the thermo switch was a 17 millimeter by one and a half because I didn't actually have a thread pitch or a, a nut sizer um, so guess what I bought I bought the nut sizer so now I'll never run into this problem again and I bought the uh, the thread, uh, the, all the taps that I need in millimeters because for trying to find stuff in millimeters around this area is almost near impossible. People's, people's heads just explode when you tell them that you need something in millimeter. Uh, you know, I used to have a car that, that I, I had a 92 RX-7 with a 398 Chevy uh, small block in it with a 400 turbo transmission with a Ford 9 inch rear end and you go into AutoZone and tell them well I got a Mazda with a Chevy engine, a Chevy transmission, a Ford rear end and we're running a Hearst shifter and all this other stuff and their head would just explode because uh, all the auto parts stores have now basically become where they just hire uh, uh, just, just $9 or $10 an hour employees instead of people that are actually like committed to it like up here in Auburn where I live at the Napa store. If you want good service go to a Napa store because those Napa stores are franchised and the owners actually usually work there. So we got a guy in town here named Napa Don that man he'll go in there he'll make everything right. But anyway back to the radiator. I'm going to tap the hole in the radiator and uh, get that get the sizing. It took me a while to figure out all the sizing and uh, we'll go ahead and tap it and then I'm going to try some other stuff here. Um, I have a new uh, boom and uh, microphone and headset for podcasting. Now I'm going to try to shoot this video a little differently. So we're going to get right into this. I'm ready to get this thing done. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do here is I'm going to try this podcast um, microphone and we're going to put this tap into the tap tool. If you've never used one of these taps, it's really easy to use and we're cutting into aluminum. So um, the metal isn't as hard as steel or any kind of other metal. So it's a very soft metal. And again, if you buy one of these radiators and it's for the Polaris Predator 500, the layout of the Outlaw is the exact same. The only difference is you will have a different size thermo switch, which the Polaris Predator is smaller than the Outlaw 450 or the Outlaw 525. And the thread pitch will be 16 millimeters by with our uh, six the the whole size is 16 millimeters and the thread pitch is 1.5 and we're going to start here to tap the hole and it may be a little awkward to get started here but the tap actually is a little smaller on the end to fit a smaller hole where the actual tap tool starts tapping the hole in the middle of the tap so if you get a little wiggle woggly here at the beginning, um, it's not too bad, but you want to try to keep the tool as straight as possible, as long as possible, but you are going to be using a lot of force. And as you can see, the radiator is moving. If you have something that you can brace the radiator in when you're doing this would be, you know, much better than just laying down flat like that. See it just jerk. But I'm not super worried about it. I've tapped <laughs> hundreds of holes. So as long as we can get the hole tapped with the rubber O-ring seal on the thermo switch, if, even if it's not straight, it will seal um, to, the, to the flat edge of the radiator with the O-ring. So we're starting to actually, we're just getting into the top of the threads. We're not getting a whole lot of resistance yet, but we are cutting into the, the metal. There we go. 
the radiator should start. I mean, I'm getting a lot of resistance here. It, it'll actually move the radiator when I'm trying to tap the hole because of how tough it is. There we go. Actually, it, actually, we're just getting the hole started. And I'm not worried about putting the metal shavings into the radiator because I ended up flushing the radiator out in my house. And just continue on with the tap. And don't forget to check out the merch store also on eBay. And we're starting to get a lot of resistance. All the links are below in the description. Um, also sell AMS oil, T1 certified dealer. And if you purchase any of this stuff off the Amazon links, that really, really, really helps me out so I can keep making videos. And we're starting to get a lot of resistance. It's it, There's so much resistance that it's actually moving the radiator. And I'm going to click off on the microphone real quick just to make sure I'm recording. Okay, and I'm back. Uh, had a few microphone issues getting this thing set up, but it actually, you can see the threads getting cut where it's pulling the excess metal up the tap, and that's what it should be doing. I'm going to take this out and clean the threads, and then we're going to put the tap back in. And you can actually see on the, the top of the tap there what I'm talking about, that it's smaller, and the middle of the tap is fatter. So your 16 millimeter will be in about the middle of the tap. And it's really not going to start tapping the hole until you actually get halfway down into the hole of the radiator. And then you're going to want to run the tap almost all the way through into the radiator and then pull the tap back out. But yeah, there's a lot of force that you have to use on this to get this hole. Okay, we got a little wiggle woggle. I'm still not worried about it. And you can see that uh, this radiator did pass a quality control test, uh, as you can see by the sticker on the side of it. And there's a lot of force going into this now. I would say I got out of the dual core radiator, because I've already pre-shot my uh, flush and fill video, I would say about a third more liquid into the radiator is what I'm allowing uh, fluid wise. I didn't measure it, but that's what I'm guessing. You can actually see how far I am into the hole. The tap's getting real stiff now. Whatever angle that that hole was tapped into, I thought it was straight, is now gonna be cut in that si in, the, in the radiator. I'm probably gonna clean the thread. Still. Oh, tap fell. Okay, I've about got the hole tapped. Once the hole is tapped, the resistance, this thing will just go right in. However, if you are going to do this at home, I would recommend not putting that fan on. Because if I remember right, once I get farther down into the hole, my tool was actually hitting the radiator fan there. And you can actually hear it cutting into the aluminum. I'll take the cap off because I realized I didn't want any... Uh, metal shreds going into the radiator cap and I think I, I think I've got the hole tapped I might do it a little bit more can't remember if I stop yeah I've got to go a little bit farther in with the tap when you run the tap in and out like this you're gonna basically you know get any of the burrs or anything off on the tap so you can clean it And this will probably be the final cut with the with the tap tool. A lot of force here. I actually did not go from a 14 to a 15 millimeter hole. I jumped from a 14 to a 16. Uh, theoretically, you would want to go 14, 15, 16. Um, but I successfully did this by jumping two sizes. And the, bu the bung that was welded into the radiator did allow me to do that. So... Uh, haven't had any issues with this so far so uh, the four-wheeler is running no leaks or anything the main the main issue with the leaks was if you watched my uh, silicone hose upgrade video was that when I re reinstalled the new thermostat I wasn't for sure if that was going to leak 
but we're so far into it i figured go ahead and replace the radiator hoses go ahead and replace radiator fluid go ahead and replace the thermostat and then we're probably going to upgrade down the road the fan and the water pump you bit you can put a bigger propeller water pump propeller in there and then um it'll cool it uh, more efficiently as well We should be about ready for the thermo switch. Oh, go ahead and get some of them shavings out. You really got to take this in and, and clean it out with water. This this video was shot in winter. That, the, it was about 12 degrees outside. And I do not have a heated garage. The only thing I have is plug-in heaters out there. And I think we are successful. Are we successful? Are we? It looks like it went in. Oh, yeah, baby. We got it tapped. Okay, it's tapped, ready to go. 16 millimeter by 1.5 thread pitch for a KTM thermo switch. If you buy this radiator and it's too small, it's for a Predator. It's a 14 by 1.5. Okay, so we got that uh, radiator pretty much uh, cut, that whole cut. And what I'm going to do now is... Uh, I'm probably going to go flush this radiator out and get the aluminum shavings out of it. And then I've also got some Wrath Racing um, air scoops that I want to put on this while it's all apart. So I'll go in the kitchen and uh, wash this radiator out, make sure I get all the aluminum out of it. And then I'll come back and install those Wrath uh, air scoops. Because they say those Wrath air scoops can cut temperature by up to like 10 to 15 degrees, I think, is what it was on this model of ATV. And I'll tell you, when you're when you're down deep in the woods and you're running and you need to get your engine cool, those things are going to be well worth the price. Um, but other than that, we'll just uh, keep going. One thing I will note, uh, that hole didn't tap correctly, exactly straight. So on this original uh, thermo switch, there's a rubber O-ring that goes in there. I might put a seal washer, a crush type washer, because it's got a flat spot just to make sure. An oversized crush washer and uh, make sure it gets a good seal and if it leaks I'll just come back and we'll, we'll mess with it from there okay and so what we're gonna do now is uh, put those air scoops on so I've kinda gotta take some of this apart I'm not real sure what all needs to come apart I know this front plastic piece is gonna have to come apart to put those uh, air scoops on for sure You really need to make sure that you get all the, if you're going to do what I did and tap that hole, you need to make sure that you get all the metal shavings out of the radiator. Um, I don't know if the seller um, just, of course it come from China, I don't know if they actually had a radiator and they just thought that the, they looked up the part number or something from Polaris and thought it was the same as the Predator, but these outlaw radiators are not the same as the Predator, so... If you're doing this mod or want to do this mod, uh, you definitely need to go ahead and get your tap set. It's worth just having just in case if it comes from the manufacturer that you, you're you able to do it so you don't have to wait three weeks to get a tap like I did. Or if you have a competent uh, radiator shop that the radiator shop has the taps on hand, but I doubt they do. I even went to a machine shop. And they're like, oh, we don't have nothing that big. And I'm like, dude, you're a machine shop. You should have these tools. So, get the last bowl here. And then these scoops, I think, will just uh, mount underneath of this plastic. Okay, so we've got our air scoops here, and uh, there's actually a little tab here that I'm un, un, unsure of what that's <laughs> what that's for. I, I wonder if these are like universal for the Predator too. Um, 
the predator and the outlaw and maybe the predator had something that mounted on this the puke tank or something I'm not real sure so because it's not matching up exactly like I thought it would but uh, we'll just put it on and see what happens because the radiator is actually a pretty tight fit No, we're going to have to be doing some modifications here. Okay, and now we're going to put this thermo switch back in and pray to God it doesn't leak. And I think we're going to have an okay seal because I can feel the rubber hit the metal right there. So we'll go ahead and turn it. Um, if it does leak, then I'll just have to go to a crush washer is what I'll have to do. But remember again, we're dealing with uh, aluminum. So you've kind of got to watch how much tension and torquing that you're doing on this. And I probably should have put this sensor on here before I put these air scoops, but. Now that ain't straight, but it'll work once that gets plugged in, hopefully. When you go to install this, don't forget about these uh, rubber caps on the top of it.
then you're just going to kind of press up because you've got another mount down here that you've got to but the rubber inside the radiator for the top mount will hold then you're going to go inside and put this mount back on okay so now we're going to put this uh, bottom brace back in and don't forget your little rubber pieces that go into your radiator this is the mounting bracket that we had to remove and then after we get this put on then we will just uh, hook up the radiator hoses going to be kind of hard for me to get an angle and you're going to push forward and get the radiator mounted in the rubber slots resistance on the other side Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to finish putting these clamps on. Uh, and then uh, next video we'll go ahead and uh, get some fluid in there. And see if we got any leaks, get it primed up. I actually ended up cutting a little bit of this off um, because I wanted to run the thermostat so actually gonna have to turn this clip around I'll tell you this was not uh, not the easy mod to do compared to that LTZ 400 that I did all they had to do was make the radiator correct and they didn't do that so run into some complications and then I wanted to run a thermostat so that was another complication because the silicone hoses uh, made it to where we weren't running the thermostat and I didn't like that and then the, I ran into the I had to take the exhaust system off which I was going to take the exhaust system off anyway but I didn't want to do that today so I run into that so the flush and fill radiator uh, will be another video so I keep these kind of short but um, what a nightmare And then the next video we'll go ahead and flush and fill the radiator and I've got a little little kink in that but I may have to end up cutting some more out of that but it's not it's not flexed real hard so 
it's getting late tonight so we'll just do this and I'm finished up and uh, don't forget to check out my other videos and we'll be doing flush and fill next week